Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. And I'm fishing today on the Stainforth and Keebe Canal. And I'm joined by Oggy. And Oggy's a Facebook winner. We ran a competition, it was about a month ago now, uh, for a, a viewer of our videos to join us and shoot a video together. And this is the venue that Oggy's brought to. So tell us all about the venue then. Well, I've got a caravan over the bridge there. It's on a big site and I drive over this bridge every day when I'm here and I always look down and I think, ooh, I fancy a go at that. Anyway, when the competition came up, I thought, well, no better than going there. I fish everywhere else around here, all commercials, Lindor, Millionaire Mix and all that. And I've always fancied to go on this. I've not fished canals for, ooh, I don't know, probably 30 years. And I thought, well, I'll have a go at that. So that's why we're here. Well, thanks for inviting us here because it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Stunning, isn't it's it? It's so you, quiet. You can't believe it, can you? Um, I've fished the Stainforth and Keeby in a few matches in the past, but more towards Thorn. Yeah. And this end of the canal is, is much wilder, isn't it? It's yeah, much it's... weedier, it's shallower and really clear. So one thing to mention, just to set the scene, Today is predicted to be the hottest day on record in the, in the UK. Oh, it'll be warm. <laughs> so we've started early and we've set up, we've picked this peg here. You spoke to the local tackle shop and they recommended that we fish between peg 170 and 180. And that's what we've done. And we found... Was it not 270? Oh, Oggy, you're right. 270 to 280, yeah. Forgive me for that. I'll, I'll forgive you. <laughs> Anyway, we, we looked along and we wanted to try and find a spot where there was a gap in the weeds and we've got one here. We've seen fish top in, we've seen a few rud close in, but really for both of us, it's a bit of an unknown, isn't it? It is exactly. I mean, I, like I say, I've never fished it. I've walked around it a few times and watched the odd match on here, but, and it looks great. I mean, I, I love it round here. It's flat, you can get behind your peg. What more do you want out of life? Uh, I think it's perfect. So. Um, it's hard for me, but I'm not going to fish today. Chappy says I can't fish. That's fair uh, enough. You're fishing. Well, it's my and, day. Uh, I've, it's your I've day. Won it. I've won it. <laughs> so we've got Monty here as well. We've got to keep him cool. And um, I think we're going to talk about it in a bit more detail, but we're going to start off on a whip. Sounds Let's see what we can catch, yeah? Sounds like a plan, yeah? Brilliant. So, Oggy, we felt the best chance of getting a fish to start with was to fish the whip. It's obviously really, really clear, the canal. Yes. Uh, and you've got to consider that obviously fishing a pole in clear water, a long pole, sometimes can spook the fish. So uh, it's probably the simplest for, form of fishing, but it's a great way to fish as well. Yeah, it's very enjoyable, but that's one thing I want to ask you. Do you believe there's anything in that painting top kitchen or like gray and white and all that kind of stuff? Do you think there's anything in that or...? I think there probably is. Because uh, I've done because it Because it's, it's obviously going to help to camouflage it against the sky, isn't it? Um, yeah. But still, I think the movement of the pole... Yeah. Even on such a... On a shallower venue like this, which is so clear, I think that can cause a problem. Yeah. I mean, we might end up fishing the pole anyway because we might want to try fishing further out towards the weeds on the far bank. Obviously, we've made a lot of disturbance here setting up we might find that to get the better fish, we've got to go further out. And what I've set you up with there is our six metre whip. And we're fishing it to hand with a two AA waggler. And we've just got a couple of shots down the line. So what we're doing is we're getting a nice, there you go, that's a bite, look. Whoa. Yeah. That's our first bite anyway. So that's a good sign. Um, well, this takes me back to when I first started. Yeah. And fishing a whip to hand. When, when Paul first came out, I remember buying a Tricast Challenger. It was about two tonne in weight. <laughs> but it were rock, so you could jump on it and anything. It were a great, great pull. And then moved up to a Silstar Power Wind. Happy well, days. Yeah, well, it is a simple way of fishing, but obviously you can't beat it for speed if you're catching lots of small fish quickly. And also, in this situation, when we want to try and be as stealthy as we can. Stealthy. And just by fishing... Um... St stealthy's never been in my vocabulary. <laughs> I don't know, you're doing well here. 
But fishing six meters takes Ooh, a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, it's. Uh, if we'd fished, I thought about starting at five meters, but I wanted to try and get out into the main boat channel to start with, purely because of that disturbance, you know. All we've done to start with is I've just put in a couple of small balls of soft canal ground bait with some pinkies and we're loose feeding some pinkies and a few hemp and tears over the top. So we're just kind of feeling our way in because obviously we don't know the venue. You could come with a much bolder approach, you know, perhaps balling in ground bait. And there we go. Ooh. Missed him. Ah. Thing is, I've got a feeling they might be small rud to start with anyway. So. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. Yeah, well, we'll just keep persevering. But that's what you've got to consider when you go to a new venue like this, particularly if you don't know it very well, is sort of feel your way in. Way, there we go. So that's what we were talking about. That looks like a bleak. Monty, you're not having it, kid. <laughs> well, bleak wasn't one of the species I was expecting. I was expecting the first fish to be a rud. So we'll just keep feeding a few hemp and tares and a few pinkies, not in too much of a tight area, and see how it develops. Right, we've come to this venue this morning. We've, like you say, we've never fished it. What would make you decide whether to come in here, ball it in with ground bait, or just loose feed and work your way in? Well, it's, it's a great question, and I think you'd have to sort of break it down into a few sort of different parts, really. The first part being, you know, if you're just pleasure fishing and you're coming fishing perhaps on a budget, it's quite expensive balling in loads of bait and ground bait. Yeah. And you, you have to fi figure that in, you know. So just loose feeding, hemp and tares like this, a few maggots, a bit of ground bait. It's a very cost effective way of fishing. But for me also, it's a really sensible way of fishing if it's a new venue because I think I mentioned it in the introduction. You don't know what to expect. Um, another factor is the time of year. Obviously, if you're fishing here in the winter, the fish might not be feeding so well, and you'd want to be a lot more cautious with your, with your feeding, and balling in a load of bait could overfeed the fish very quickly. Yeah, that's fair enough. And conversely, when the fish are feeding, you know, being very positive with your feed can obviously catch you a lot of fish. So, if I was fishing a match, I'd want to be thinking, I want an edge on everybody else. So I'd be prepared to ball it in because one thing balling in does, it creates a great disturbance and can attract the fish from around the area to your swim. So that for me is a great advantage of balling in ground bait. Well, we bumped that one. That looked like a bed of fish, Oggy. Well, do me. <laughs> if I could keep it there in that, water yeah. i could see it perfect yeah we're having a bit of trouble aren't we with the reflection off the far bank yeah it's great when them trains come past yeah <laughs> don't so know, i don't, don't know, know if i've answered the question i've stopped yeah but to me if i if i was pleasure fishing i wouldn't ball it in yeah but i'd fill my way in and i'd you know feed accordingly so if i start catching more fish bigger fish i can up the feed um in a competition Perhaps when it's good time of year like this, I know the fish are feeding, I'll be prepared to start off with a much more bold approach. Well, like you say, you want, if you're fishing a match, you want to win it. Yeah. And another thing to think about with that is, there's two sort of advantages of balling it in. One is a key one, which I mentioned, which is creating a big disturbance to attract the fish. Sometimes you can ball in, but not really feed very much. So you can use a low, low feed ground bait, Perhaps mix it with soil. There we go. What we got there? Rud. rud. Yeah. You gotta love a rud, haven't you? I uh, I, I love all fish, me. Um, I love fishing. I love being out on bank. I love being in sunshine. I can't be doing with satin. Well, I'm the same as you. I just want to be fishing all the time. Uh, I'm not too sure about all the time. I I'm not over here when it's lagging it down or it's freezing. Well, the thing is now, you can pick and choose, can't you? Exactly, that's what I like to do. And like, where I am at the moment, I've got the opportunity to, which is even better. Because uh, I can just get my gear out and 
just go trip that one at ponds, do a bit of fishing, happy days. And it's only two two minute walk back to the van so I can go and get a brew. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, well, what bait are you going with there? Pink, double pinky. Yeah. Double fluoro pinky, yeah? Okay. I'm all fingers and thumbs, big fat useless lad. But, but, well, one thing I would say is I'm, I'm feeding hemp and tares and uh, we'll probably feed it for a little while before we actually try it just to hopefully let the fish get some confidence in feeding on it but this time of year hemp and tares can be just a devastating method when you're targeting roach. Yeah. And there's times when you'll only catch on hemp. You can feed tares all day, try tares and you don't get a bite. And then conversely, a bit like that day on the Trent that you're on about, yeah. I was catching on tears straight away. Yeah, so right. you've just got to, that's fishing, isn't it? You've got, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You've got to adapt to the day. So yeah. what happens one day might not necessarily have it happen the next. But I, I exactly. think tears are great because if you can catch on a tear, typically you're catching a better quality roach. And they're a lot easier to fish with. They're a lot easier to hook than messing about hooking you know, small grains of hemp. I've watched a lot of your videos before when you were like Shakespeare before and I also found them entertaining because like you'd carry on talking and explain everything to it and all that. But what I really like now is where do you see fishing going from like now? Because where we are at Seven Lakes, we've got a cracking little junior section and it's built up from like three or four kids wanting to go fishing to like they're being 14 now in last match. And I said to what parents like when they're there, I said, surely it's better I'm doing this than sat on Xbox and PlayStation and on the phones. And you like running Cadence now, how, how do you see it going? Is there a, a progression of people coming in or are, is, are they not interested? Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I'm really grateful to junior angling clubs because no one in my family fished. And I got into course fishing through the Junior Starlets, which was an amazing club. But, you know, back then, I think there was obviously a lot more juniors fishing. And it is a concern now that we're not getting so many youngsters coming into the sport. I don't think it's just fishing, I think it's lots of the traditional pastimes, people, you know, there's so many more options nowadays, and then obviously you think about all the other distractions like the computers and everything like that. But like you just mentioned with the club that you're in, with an increase in juniors, in our area, thankfully, there's a really good increase as well. So that's encouraging, and it's something that, it's sort of fundamental to our company as well. It's what the Go Fishing Give Back strapline is all about because, you know, we want to try and encourage juniors and our big sort of emphasis is to support the charity called Get Hooked on Fishing, which is a national charity. It's absolutely fantastic. And a percentage of our sales goes to that charity. So any product that we sell over 50 pound in value, we donate, donate a, a kid's whip to get hooked on fishing. Well, that's excellent, that. And uh, yeah, it's something I'm really passionate about. I think it's true. We're all a bit worried about the future of the sport. Well, he does quite a lot, doesn't he? That Matt Godfrey at Guru. He... Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, doing they're, kind a, of bringing... they're doing some great initiatives as well. And we 
since we've started Cadence, I've been contacted by quite a few junior clubs and it's really great to get involved um, and, and help out. And I think, like you, you know, you mentioned that your granddaughter's getting into fishing. Oh yeah, she's oh she's keen as mustard now. And it's great because uh, you're obviously really enjoying that. You're spending some really good quality time with her, and she's really enjoying the fishing. Yeah, she's do she's doing really well at the moment actually. I mean, she's she's loved by everybody on site anyway because uh, she's a bright, a sort of smiling. She never lets anything get her down, even though the problems that she's got and. Absolutely brilliant, and I can't praise the two lads who run the junior section enough. They're uh, they're really good, and all all lads who fish the matches, uh, the senior matches, they normally come down on the Sunday that the kids have got, try to give anybody any advice that they need, and that it's it's a really good atmosphere. A lot of uh, well, the thing is, is you around. do. I mean, I think most people you get a lot of satisfaction out of helping anybody with fishing, but particularly getting juniors into fishing. Well, that's it, exactly. I mean, we've all had help when we started fishing. Oof. And the worst thing you see sometimes, isn't it, is juniors that are really keen, but they're just not set up with the basics. Well, that's it. And, and they're not going to catch, and then they're going to get put off and probably never go fishing again. That's it, there's, there's nothing worse than, I mean, when I first started fishing, there were a few of us lads used to fish at ponds at top of Pig Hill. And we'd catch little uh, stunted crucians. Great yeah. fun. Yeah. But then when I started fishing, when I started working, I packed it all in and then went back working and met a bloke called Jack Rogers and I never looked back from that. He was a, a absolute great bloke. He's taken me fishing and everything. Yeah, I think great nearly bloke. everybody will have stories like that and. It's just great to, well, it's, to, to give back bit, and help. Whoa, there we go. Well, that's what we, I... What we got now? Another rod or a, a rod? A rod. Well done for swinging it past Monty. He's quite uh, keen on checking out. Well, that's what I want now. I want, I want to be somebody's Jack Rogers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And help them and... Well, Monty, <laughs> get the fish and knock me hand. But it's a... The smiles on the kids' faces when they've caught fish, it's, it's brilliant. And like, some per, like, like you say about like presents and all that, but at least you know what to buy them now. But I wish some of the parents would like talk to the anglers yeah. before they buy stuff because they'll go to the pound shop and buy them the line and buy them the floats and buy them the hooks and then they're mourning because they can't catch fish. Instead of just like having a chat, and you know what uh, anglers are like, you can't shut them up once they start. So I think everybody be happy just to throw a bit of advice out if if it was asked for. Absolutely. Well, we sat here a bit now, and I'm not really happy with how things are going for me. Do you think it's I was presenting bait, or whether I'm not seeing the bites quick enough. But would you like fancy jumping up box and just I'll sit on yours and just well, I'll watch no, you for I'd a love bit. to have a go. I'm not going to refuse, that's for sure. But I would say, you know, just bear in mind the conditions. It's so bright, so hot. Um, we are up against it a bit, but I'll, I'll happily have a go if that's all right with you. That's, it's all right by me, kid. <laughs> I'll sit behind you and watch you. I mean. I'm here to learn. <laughs> I might be an old git, but I'm here to learn. Come on then, let's have a go. I'll probably catch an old boot or something. Yeah, we've, we've seen a few of them coming from Bolton. Well, I did notice you you deepened up, which was a, a good tactic. So we, we started off just fishing on the bottom. Well, off the bottom rather, up in the water. And... Um, I was going to suggest we did that, but you'd already automatically done it, so... Well, if I'm not catching, I want to know why I'm not catching, and mm. is there anything I can do for make me catch? Well, that... That's why I'm sat behind you now, watching you with your super uh, team on. That's exactly the, the right attitude with fishing. You've got to be prepared to adapt to the conditions on the day, haven't you? See, the weird thing is, I am sat now, what? three or four foot difference 
but I can see the floor a lot better here than what I could do sat on my box. Yeah, it's just, we'd had a, I started off with a, a 3B insert waggler, 3BB insert waggler, and you were struggling to see it, weren't you? Yeah. So we put on a straight waggler, which is a bit better. Yeah. But yeah, I think what it is, is you've got this dappled effect between the, the reflection on the far bank, which is a dark color, and then you've got this ripple, which is where the float is, so. Yeah. I think what, what we will do is for sure, we'll, we'll try a long pole as well, and we'll get a bit further over. For one, because I think you'll see the float better, and two, we might find that there's some better fish hanging out towards that far bank weed, so it'll make an interesting comparison. Well, at the moment, we've just got two number 10 shot down the line. So we've got a nice slow fall of the maggot down through the water. The advantage of an insert waggler is obviously it's a lot more sensitive. And I don't think, I think a lot of the bites we're getting are off, off those small rud. I mean, you even had a bleak, didn't you? Yeah. So, you know, when you're fishing for small fish, then it pays to fish with a much more sensitive float. But I'm going to let the bait settle down and see if there's anything on the bottom underneath. A difficult thing when you're fishing a whip to hand like this is the influence of the wind on the water. Yeah. Because what you don't want is the, the bow in the line pulling the float off course, because obviously the bait's not natural then. So yeah, all the time at the moment, I'm trying to keep the float as, st as steady as possible. Yeah, you can't shoot your line now, can you, because of all that weed in front? Yeah, that's making it difficult because of the weed here. But um, I have got one little trick up my sleeve that I might need to employ. But I'll just try one more cast so I can feel the you're up my back of my neck burning. Well, it's, it's, it's getting <laughs> quite warm. <laughs> right, just watch your ear and you're feeding your, your swim there and then you're going further out. Is that your maximum head coming into it? Where you're thinking all the time, well, I might have to go over there to like 15, 16 metres or I might have to come on the inside if this one goes down. Or are you, is it just bad <laughs> feeding? No, no, you're right. I mean, you can't, I think, you know, once you've been a matchman, you can't stop sort of thinking like that. And obviously you want to, develop different areas of your swim. So it might be to attract different types of fish, you know, small fish in one area, bigger fish in another, or it might just be simply to allow you to rest this one swim so you don't, you know, almost overfish it. And so you can constantly keep pick, picking fish from different areas, because yeah. obviously in a match, that's the mentality. And the other thing I've been doing as well, which is a bit sneaky, been just throwing a few maggots just close in and I've seen some fish really close in, so I just thought I'd better take the pressure off and just just try fishing down here just for a second. Yeah, that's, that's something I want to ask you as well. Uh, you see, I, I watch all, a lot of these YouTube things and I read a lot of articles. I mean, you get different people with like different advice and it's a case of never leave feeding fish, but don't take out fish out of your swim. <laughs> yeah, so, it's a bit of a conflict that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so we, which one are we going for? Well, I think that's where, I, the, I don't like that's where the experience fish. comes in, because... That's a better stamp on the feet. It's only a tiny little rud, but it's absolutely beautiful. But, um, yeah, I think it's just about working the swim. Yeah. And with experience, you get the, the sort of knowledge to know when to rest a swim, because... As you say, you never want to leave feeding fish. Yeah. But if the fish are feeding well, it's worth establishing another line just in case that swim does dry up. Yeah. And obviously if it's if it's fish if that peg's feeding well, that swim's feeding well rather, you can then have a quick go on another line. Oh, there's some fish there as well. Yeah. And then you can start to develop that as maybe a bonus fish line or another line for if the fish back off during the match. So uh, maybe I haven't really answered the question because it's just all about adapting to the current situation because on some days you've got to be so patient and bold and you might only get three or four bites in a match. Yeah. You know? 
So you want to maximize that opportunity. You don't want to, so you might end up just fishing one line pretty much all day. But then conversely, you might have four or five different lines, different swims going in one match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just comes with experience. But I think the most important thing I think is just the good old fashioned feeding little and often. Yeah. I've... Because that way you can build your swim up. If you go gung ho and feed a load of bait, a lot of times you'll you'll wreck the fishing. Yeah, it's like that. You can't take it back out, can you? No. Nope. Well, if it's all right with you, I'm going to have a sneaky look on a tear just to see if that just makes a difference. Because at the moment, on the whip, we're catching, but we're not going to have the most spectacular net of fish. No. We're going to have probably a couple of pounds of small bits. So I think what we'll do is we'll now set up a long pole and explain a bit about that and just see if that can catch us some better fish. Sounds like a plan to me, but kid. First of all, let's just have a look on a tear and see if there's any fish feeding on the tears. Well, I'm looking forward to this because I've never ever fished a tear in my life. Well, what might end up happening is we might end up fishing the tear on a longer pole with a light strung out rig. But let's just see because that's the thing with the tear. When, you, when they're on it, you'll normally pretty much get a bite straight away. Well, no bites on the tear on this. I'll have one more go. And I think we'll set the long pole up. Well, Oggy, we've set the pole up and we're catching some fish. Do for me, kid. What's, uh, I suppose, uh, quite an interesting point is, um, because the weed goes out past four metres, I've had to fish with five sections of my pole. So I've got quite a long line, but I'm having to do that because I've got to be able to, one, swing my bait in without snagging up, and two, when we've got a fish, I've got to swing them in before they get into the weeds. Yeah, this, uh, this stretch at Canal seems to get this pond weed all over at certain times at year. Yeah. I think we, we've just hit it now where it's still fishable because like in another week or two, you don't be able to get a line in. Well, it certainly makes it challenging, but one thing's for sure, it's absolutely full of fish, isn't it? Yep. It's just whether we can, with the conditions that we're faced with today with this bright sun, whether we can tempt some better specimens, but Still, we're getting bites. I'm happy catching fish. So I'll have one more go, and then you're back on the box, all right? Happy days. Have you caught on a tur? Yeah. Let's see what it is. I reckon that's a bit better fish, don't you? Yeah. Better roach. Not a monster, but definitely the best fish we've had so far, so that's a good sign. Maybe we'll catch a fish on the tear after all. See, that's it. You saw them as years of tears from where me and Chappy from, the tears. 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 <laughs> Empen tears. Empen tears. Catchables. One of the things I wanted to ask you, when you come to a new venue like you have done today, like we've talked before about the baiting up and the feeding and all that. When you first get here, would you just like sit on your box for five minutes and think, right, I'm gonna start off here, start off the, and then go to that plan, or would you just like make it up as you go along? Well, I think if I know the venue, and particularly the area or the peg that I'm fishing, then, then you can sort of have a fairly firm plan as to what to do. But as we've mentioned, you know, we're fishing on the day, things can change, so. You've also always got to remain flexible, even on a venue in a, a peg yeah. that you know well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you don't know a venue, then that goes back to what I was saying about feeding and what's happened today. You know, we started off on a whip today. We caught some fish, but it probably wasn't the best method, certainly in these conditions. So we've gone on to the long pole and we've had to adapt. And I think that's a, that's a really key phrase, really, just adapting, adapting to the conditions and getting the most out of the swim. But like, you fish canals all over. Are they not like much of a muchness? Like if you're going, 
you know like on inside line you'll be catching perch or over on fair but you catch a bigger stamp of fish is that does that not work on most of the canals that you fish anyway well i think there's some good sort of fundamentals that are true on all canals you know the kind of thing about the depth the fact that you've nearly always got a defined boat channel you've always got a ledge on one side and a ledge on the other um and to the most part yeah it, you, you are fishing in a similar way but what what's more important really is the species that you're targeting in the time of year that will really dictate to you what tactics you're going to use and what baits you're going to use yeah because this is a pl prolific stretch for a bream apparently but it doesn't seem as conducive to catching bream on a day like this no absolutely i think if you were fishing overcast conditions maybe with a nice ripple wind on the water you could target the bream but imagine today how bright how clear it is the big fish are going to be hiding well away from us and in the weed perhaps if you fished early in the morning or late in the evening yeah that would be good tactics this time of year to to try and focus on those bigger fish that i'm sure live here yeah 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 but we're now fishing in the worst part of the day so i'm just happy that we're getting bites off uh, off something Another thing I've been thinking about lately, I mean, it's all these additives and things like that. What, what's your opinion? Do, do they work? Uh, are they just something else that catch fishermen as opposed to catching fish? Well, I think there's an element of that for sure. You know, people are always wanting to find a wonder bait or a wonder additive that's going to make them catch fish all the time in all conditions. And I think there are some merits in using additives, definitely. Things like ground baits, you know, there's, well, there's hundreds of different brands and flavours that you can use. And what I personally like to do is just stick to two or three, you know, tried and tested ground baits that I have great confidence in. Um, so when I'm fishing, I'm not worrying about whether I'm using the right additive or the right ground bait. And the other thing I think that's key is that you don't overpower the additives in your ground yeah. bait or on your bait because it's tempting to do it isn't it you know to a human what smells really great really strong to a fish might be too overpowering yeah i understand all that so a lot of the time with my ground bait i mix my ground bait 50 percent with um brown crumb so brown crumb hasn't really got any additives in it apart from the fact that it's made from pure bread which is a wonderful bait anyway isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but i think it kind of dilutes the flavor a bit and the other important thing with ground baits is you want them to achieve what you want. So in terms of how heavy they are, the colour of them, how they break down. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's something that's worth spending some time understanding. But I wouldn't get too bogged down with too many different additives and flavours. So I, I just sort of narrow it down to perhaps two types of ground bait. Fish meal and sweet. Sweet, yeah. So if I'm focusing on carp or if I'm focusing on bream, bigger fish, I'll add fish meal to my ground bait. And if I'm targeting more silver fish, smaller fish, obviously there's no set rules in fishing, but I'll use a sweeter ground bait and a sweeter mix. Yeah. Um, but I think the natural baits like hemp, obviously worms, you can't get much better than that. Worms, chop worm, is such an amazing attractor. And I, I think that's probably the most important attractor because chop worm can definitely transform your swim. But yeah, ultimately I think fishing's simple, just keep it simple. Um, <laughs> find some baits that you're happy with, you've got confidence in and stick to them. Are you gonna let me have a waggle of that pole or what? Cause it's, uh... Looking from behind here, it looks pretty spectacular, kid. It is, it's a lovely pole. And yeah, I really should let you have another go, shouldn't I? Yeah, well, you should. <laughs> it, it, right, it let is me my, have it, this bite now and then... Uh, it is my day. You're back in the seat. Happy days. There's a lot of fish out there, a lot of small fish intercepting the bait up in the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. And I was just trying to see if I could catch anything a bit deeper down underneath. Might be one of those days where we just pick off a few of these small fish and... Well, like you said, uh, enough times, the weather, I mean, I love this weather and I'd take it all day long and I'd rather be out here catching a few little bits 
than sat at house catching notes. <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> I think it's time for a quick water break. It's scorching. Oh, it's mad hot, kid. That's a good tip. I like to freeze water bottles like that. On a day like this, it's absolutely beautiful. Here you go then, you're back in the chair. I'll just swing that out for you. There you go. Oh, this slides through nice and easy, doesn't it? I'll get you got a fish already, look. Oh, that, I don't miss about you in my gang. <laughs> you don't miss about, do you? That was a, I think that's a bleak, just grabbed it as you were shipping the pole out. Is it a bleak or a rud? It's a rud. Nice one. This pole's a nice bit of kit though. Well, thanks for giving us a plug, but yeah, it's a, it's a beauty, I love it. It really is a very nice, stiff, lightweight pole, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I didn't think it were any good, I wouldn't say it were any mm. good. I don't, I don't tell lies. But yeah, you can all this all day without any bother, can't you? Mm, mm, it's a beauty. Just have a lift up now. I had a feeling you might have been in a bit of weed. Let me just watch that. Yeah, just try and, that's it. Because like on this side, when you get towards that far bank shelf, there's a lot of weed that's sometimes holding the bait up. Obviously that's where the fish are is sheltering today, so it's good to get right up against it. There you go. Expertly done, Oggy. Yeah, you can't keep a fat lad from bolting down. <laughs> That's it. I just helped it because we just... There, yeah, it? it's a bit tight through there, and we got Monty to add into the equation as well. Ah, not quick enough was the cry. <laughs> he never actually catches the fish, he just wants to kind of Get close to him. Watch him. I know. A bit close to this fat lad's hand, though. <laughs> well, we've sort of priced our poles a bit differently in that we sell the 13 meter pole on its own, and then you can build your own package up to suit your needs. Well, but that's the, a better actual, idea, actually, yeah, if the you price, don't mind me saying. Yeah, well, the price on the pole is a thousand pounds, and then if you look on the website, you can build up the package you want. So, say for yourself, you, you're mainly fishing commercials, you'll be wanting to buy power tops and top threes. Yeah. You can select how many you want. Ah, that's nicely done, nicely done. Um, somebody else like myself who perhaps fishes rivers, more natural venues, wants longer top kits. Got it. So basically, the idea is obviously we can cater for different anglers. Do you know what? Oh, that's the best fish of the day, isn't it? Better stamp. Well, nice one. See, monkey maggot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there might be something in that, you know.
Well, should we have a look at the rigs that we've used today? Yeah, there's something I wanted to ask you about, actually. Right, when we fish the whip, I remember when, we, when I first started fishing whip, we always used to like fish a billy making canal grey. Yeah. And it's very much the same now because I see them fishing whip and then use a top and bottom floor and that doesn't seem right for me because I'm, I like using a whip, uh, a waggler, so I can like sink the line even though we couldn't do it today because of all the weed. weed. Yeah. No, I, I think um, a lot of the time when I'm fishing a whip, I like to use a bottom end flo float like that waggler. Um, we, you struggled a bit to see the I final see float, didn't you? So we put that, cover. that um, peacock yeah. straight waggler on, and that worked well. But I just think, yeah, it, it's great because it, it enables you to get the float into position. Normally you can sink the line behind it because it's bottom end only, and they're very versatile. You can fish it on the drop, or you can pull some shot down and have a mini bulk as well. Yeah, that's, so, that's a joy to haul that, I must say. Yeah, that's our CP200 whip, and we fished that at six metres. Yeah. Um, and again, for being basic, for beginners and kids, fishing like that's a really effective way. Well, yeah, that's, Simple way. I, I, I will talk about my grand horse before, but I've, I've got to fish in the whip because it's a lot easier to get out of tangles. You don't get bothered with bird's nests on your reel and that. And if you can instill into a, the feeding, the presentation, then you can start going later on after that. So that, yeah, that was my definitely. thoughts anyway, whether Absolutely. it's right or not. I totally that's, that's agree. Right and I suppose that sort of leads on to the rig that we were using on the long pole. So this is a bit more of a sort of technical rig, if you like, a bit more complicated. Yeah. And the depth at 13 metres was, well, it was, it was a good eight foot deep over there. So it's yeah. quite a deep canal, that's worth bearing in mind. But because the fish were feeding up in the water, we shallowed up to, I don't know, we were fishing about three foot off the bottom in the end. And I like to use style rigs a lot. I've noticed that. I mean, I've still got style rigs from years ago and I kind of stopped using them because they're a bit fiddly and that, but I noticed before you had them right tight together so it was just like a long piece. Yeah. What's the difference between like doing that or you, like using an olive? Well, the reason I like to use a, a rig like this when I'm fishing up in the water is I've obviously got a lot of, I think there's about 12 styles on this rig. So it makes it really versatile. So you can bunch it up like we did to sort of create a, a, a really good bulk to yeah. get the bait down quickly because the fish were feeding. They were hitting yeah, the yeah, bait yeah, so yeah, quickly, yeah. weren't they? You wanted to register it. So by creating a bulk like that of styles, that's one form of presentation. You can have a spread bulk, which is a bit more of a compromise. So you're actually spreading the bulk out over a slightly longer area. So that will fall with a bit better presentation than a, than a main bulk. So it's and more then versatile a, then? Absolutely. And then you could, you could spread those styles out and you could fish it completely on the drop. So I know that it's a pain. Um, style leads are hard to put on and time consuming, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. A good compromise is the um, stots that you yeah. can get now. You probably might use those I, on I, the, I use yeah. stots on commercial. So you can achieve a similar presentation with stots over using I'm struggling over with using shot. At the micro shot, I can't get them on line. So just to summarise on the line, we were fishing with a 012 main line. So we were fishing with some finesse and the hook length was 097. So I think with it being so bright today yeah. and the water clear, we had to fish a bit finer than perhaps we'd like to. I just can't believe that we caught really with the, the sunshine and the brightness and I couldn't even see it float because it <laughs> pity there weren't any more trains came past. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I have been pulled on it a few times, but I have mentioned that this could be the hottest day on record. Well, so have we picked the worst day possible, maybe? Well, not really, because I love the heat. And I, I don't mind if we don't catch fish. I'd, fishing's not all about catching fish, it's being out and enjoying yourself. And yeah. like, As we spoke about before, about like my granddaughter and that, she's doing really well. But is there any tips you could give me to give her to make her enjoy it more or even catch more fish or whatever without going into too much depth? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a big subject. It's a great question. And um, I think there's a few good tips. First one, I think, is feeding. Obviously, feeding is so important when you're fishing. And 
just sort of emphasise to her the need to be really busy and keep feeding little and often. You know, she's got, um, she's obviously got the, she's good at what she does. She's good fishing the whip and just get her to be really busy when she's feeding. So feeding little and often. Uh, in fact, we used to do it when I was in the juniors. You'd sometimes had to just feed and not fish. They really emphasised how important that was. Um, and also just to think about what she's feeding. So what's the species she's trying to attract? If, if the venue that she's fishing has got lots of small fish, she's going to need to try and find a bait that's going to... Oh, that was nicely done. Oops. Yeah, that she's going to hopefully target the better fish. Conversely, she might want to just catch what she can and use baits like maggots. So obviously feeding them baits critical. And I think uh, preparation as well. You know, that's another key thing. If you're serious about, or if you're starting to get serious about fishing in matches, just make sure you've got enough rigs ready, that the, the rigs are right for what you want in terms of the balance between the hook and the line, the size of the float, and the elastic, so that she's fishing with balanced tackle. And also to have plenty of hooks tied ready to save time, because obviously when you're a junior, um, and as a beginner, you, you can take a lot longer to, to do simple things like change your hook or change your rig. And um, really, that's it. Just keep it simple, keep enjoying a fish in, and learn, because we've all got to learn. We all learn, don't we? We all keep learning all the time, and just well, be open-minded. Well, I'm, I'm coming up for 60 now, and I've learned loads today, and I'd like to thank you for it. Well, you're more than welcome. It's been great fun. I think the conditions have been against us, haven't they, with it being so hot and bright? Yeah, but, but uh, what's impressed me is how you decided to change and we change this and change that and we're still catching fish, so that's happy days. Well, we've had a, a nice run of fish now, haven't we, by fishing over towards that far bank weed. Nothing massive, perhaps four or five ounces is the biggest rud we've had. But it's great fun and I think you can see the potential. I think it's got your, your kind of interest oh, yeah, going to come a... back and fish again and give it a go. Definitely. I'll be... I'll be coming on here. I'll run a couple of matches on here next year, I think. I'll have a way with Scunny Angling and book a matches for our, se our season next year. Wonderful. Get away from commercials a bit. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I've re thoroughly enjoyed it today. Well, Oggy, I just sneaked another go, and I've got, got a beautiful rud there. I think we'll get that in the net and we'll call it a day. I could do with a pipe meat. I think that sounds like a brilliant idea. Yeah. Well, Hoggy, I've really enjoyed that today. Tough conditions, but I can see the potential of this venue, and I'd love to come back and fish it another time. Well, you're more than welcome to come and stop at ours if you want to, kid. And I've absolutely loved it today. I mean, it's been a good laugh. The dog has been an absolute star. <laughs> he's, um, um, he's still trying to cool off because it's been so hot. Yeah, well, I must have heard mm, three, four, five times in it, Chappie, that it's been the hottest day on record. Yeah. Well, I might have mentioned it, but anyway. I, I felt it. I wouldn't mind. Just uh, thought I'd give Chloe one of our whips, a five metre pole for her to, to use. This is one of the ones that we donate to get hooked on fishing, so Thank maybe she can much. make use of that. Oh, she'll be made up. Thank you very much, I appreciate no that. No worries at all. And uh, like I say, it's been a brilliant day. So. I've really enjoyed it and jobs reaped. Thanks for watching. <laughs>